If you're anything like us, you don't find yourself getting particularly frightened by old horror movies. Look at these assholes. A movie about walking to 7-Eleven by yourself would be more terrifying. Okay, he looks pretty suspicious. Hollywood isn't exactly telling the most bone-chilling tales these days either. Ten hours of footage of a producer's empty mansion, ghosts you can literally throw in the trash, and this horse shit. Bye-bye, man. You may be asking yourself, man, did we ever know how to make a scary movie? Well, the answer to that question is a loud, richly baritone yes. Because if you go back to the early days of cinema, you'll find some truly horrifying works of film, many of which, it is important to note, were scary by accident. Here's The Execution of Mary Stewart, released in 1895. That was a year in which film was so new that most people were sufficiently entertained by watching soundless footage of trains and people riding gigantic bicycles. But Thomas Edison decided to go straight for the torture porn because he, among many other things, was a big whistling asshole. Edison hired a director, gathered a bunch of actors, and recreated the 1587 beheading of Mary Stewart from start to uncensored head rolling finish. The 18 second film actually features the first trick edit at the moment when the actress playing Mary is replaced with a mannequin. Normally we wouldn't bother pointing out that a movie didn't actually kill one of its actors, but when you're talking about a movie produced by a guy who was absolutely willing to publicly execute animals in order to sell his inventions, that's a welcome asterisk. L'Inferno was Italy's earliest feature-length movie, and it mostly takes place in hell because they didn't want anyone to actually enjoy it. This movie came out before World War I, and it's full of some truly wild shit, including a naked man carrying his own head like a bag full of poop, people buried up to their necks in the ground, and this asshole just ripping their hair out, and demons just wailing on a bunch of horrified naked people. They didn't ask to be here, guys. You act like they stole from you. The final image of this movie is a huge three-mouthed Satan sitting on the horizon, presumably overseeing the events of the film, while chewing on the bodies of two hapless bastards. Look at him go. Weird they couldn't find people for his other mouths. Some movies like to save their most shocking scenes for the end, but those movies are not The Man Who Laughs, which opens with a nobleman being sentenced to death in an Iron Maiden, while his son Gwynplaine is given surgery to force his face into a grotesque permanent smile. That's some weirdly specific justice being dispensed there. While we are clearly meant to sympathize with him, it doesn't help that he is smiling like an undead maniac for the entire movie. Just look at this goddamn ghoul. I can't have tears for you, man. As you may have guessed, Batman's arch nemesis the Joker was actually based on Gwynplaine, who in turn was based on the director's hatred of peaceful, dreamless sleep. 1933's The Peanut Vendor is a stark reminder of a bygone era in which child abuse was an acceptable form of children's entertainment. The star of this experimental short is a pipe cleaner monkey puppet singing along to an up-tempo jazz number while simultaneously daring anyone who looks at him to continue believing in God. The director is said to have based the puppet's movements on his wife's dancing, making this one of the most circuitous cries for help in recorded history. He was either married to a reanimated skeleton or psychological terror is a dance you can do and we didn't know it existed. Based on an Edgar Allan Poe story, the 1936 short Il Caso Valdemar deals with a man who wants to find out what happens if a dying person is put under hypnosis. He picks his good pal Valdemar, who is dying of tuberculosis, a disease you may recognize as being the closest thing to a retirement package that they offered in those days. Pretty low bar for hypnotism, too. The whole operation is suspect. Anyway, once the experiment is over, the hypnotist tries to bring his buddy back to life. Unfortunately, as soon as Valdemar comes out of his hypnotic state, he speed rots into a skeleton like he drank from the false grail. You chose poorly. It is unclear why this happens. It just does, because every reel of film from pre-war Europe is absolutely haunted. Hopefully he didn't mark this experiment down as a success, because buddy, you are inflating your numbers. Hey, thanks for watching that video. If you want to subscribe, please hit the big C in the middle. If you want to watch another video, please click one of the links on the right. And if you want to get notifications from YouTube every time you have a new video, click the little bell icon and they will send you a notification every time you put up a new one.